Good morning from Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, um, thank you for joining me today as we discuss uh, crowdfunding in, within the African context. We're going to be looking very much about localized, around localization strategies, what works, what doesn't in Africa, both from an individual basis and if you're looking at it as a charity. So to start off, I'd like to chat to you about a guy in Corsi Mbelair. He is a young petrol attendant, lives in a little town called Somerset West, outside Cape Town, about 45 minutes from the main town. Last week, Friday, a young girl, Monet, arrived at the petrol station and uh, she said, look, just please pause for a moment. I just need to check if I've got my card. I don't know if I've got money to fill up. He says, no problem. He starts cleaning her windows. About five minutes later, um, she realizes that she doesn't have a card and she just says to him, look, of course, I'm very sorry, but I don't have the money with me. Don't worry, I'm, I'm sure I'll make it, it'll be okay. And he was like, yo, no, this is not a good thing at all. Um, it's a dangerous highway, 45 minutes you go past some very dangerous areas. Don't worry, I will put the 100 rand in for you. Without even asking further, he just put the, put the money in, paid for it and said, thank you, goodbye, pay me back when you can. And she was just astounded. She went through to Cape Town for the day at work, came back at the end of the day, gave him the 100 rand back, to which he was very surprised. He didn't expect her to see her so soon. And, um, and also gave him a bit extra. But she said, you know, what he had done was such an extraordinary act of kindness. Um, she would like to see if anyone else would like to support him in, his, you know, in what he does. Um, he comes from a very poor area. Um, he lives with his, um, with his mother and his two children. And so she put a campaign up onto Backer Buddy. A week later, over 2,500 people have individually donated to Nkosi and it's raised over 500,000 rand for him. This is a guy who's gone from a place where he's just a normal petrol attendant but through a single act of random kindness it has absolutely transformed his life through crowdfunding. But the reason I want to talk about this, so you know, just as to show where we're going, the Sunday Times, this is the biggest uh, newspaper in South Africa. Um, a week later, on page three, there's a half-page article on Mbele. That's him over here. Wonderful man, very kind, very considerate gentleman. And it details also that from 100 rand, over 500,000 rand was raised. And not only that, but his company, Shell, also donated a further 500,000 rand for him to give to a charity of his choice. Now, it's a, it's a classic crowdfunding story, but what makes it different in Africa? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Firstly, there's a significant issue around trust in, in, um, uh, trust in, in crowdfunding in Africa, and uh, that came through quite strongly. What happened almost immediately is that the campaign went live on Friday. By Sunday, over 200,000 rand had been raised. That's unheard of for someone who normally earns around um, uh, 6,000 rand a month, let's say. Of course, he locked himself in his shack in the township because he was terrified that someone was going to come and put a gun to his head and shoot him. He called us and said, look, please, can you help? I don't want this money. I'm very worried. And we said to him, not a problem at all, because what Backer Buddy does, which is quite different, is, um, is we administer funds post-campaign raises. And overseas in the States and so forth, it's generally not a problem. Someone raises the funds, um, they, they, are, they are handed over to the person, and that's it, or to the charity organization. Um, in Africa, if you live in a poor area, it can be very near to death centers. It can be very dangerous. Um, so we immediately put up into this camp page a statement right at the top to say, the funds will not be paid into Nkosi's account. They will be held by Backer Buddy and paid to the institutions that he would like them to, um, uh, for example, education institutions and so forth. That was, we put that statement up there to make damn sure that people knew that their funds were not sitting in this account, so they could not come and put a gun to his head. What happened as a result of that, even though that in course he had, had, had asked us to do this, the response from the general public was, hang on, you're stealing my money. I contributed to Nkosi and now who's this organization, this third party who's suddenly taking the money and holding it, they're not, they're not giving to Nkosi, this is not right. And within the context of Africa, um, where, there's a, where there's a lot of history around um, people 
being manipulated or, or being used for one reason or another, it was seen it became a race issue as well. So now you had two issues coming through, both race and trust. So that was something that we did not expect at all. But you can understand very clearly why that happens. We then had to, to, to go very much into crisis management control to correct the narrative and say, actually, of course, he has full control over his funds, but he has asked us for his own safety to ensure that, that um, the funds stay with the platform and we pay according to where he would like us to pay. And that caused a huge amount of, of discussion and, uh, and, and quite divisive argument um, within media, um, both offline and, and online. Um, and we're talking about um, over 80 different news, um, news articles were published within a single week. That's on TV, radio, um, uh, online media. It was, it was significant. So the point is, as an individual campaign, it was very powerful. As a crowdfunding campaign, it was fantastic. You had 100 rand, he has a young man who literally is just a petrol attendant. A week later, um, he is a, he's 500,000 rand richer. He can buy a house, he can, put his, he can put his kids through school, it's fantastic. But within the African context, we had to look at two key, two key things again, which maybe I should just reiterate. One is the, is the issue around trust, and two is to ensure, looking at the, at the historical context of Africa, one needs to be very careful as, as, how, as, as how you work with people. Now, the other thing that, um, that, um, that I think is very important within an African context is the management of, of funds post a campaign raise for, on a crowdfunding platform is very important. And one has to be very transparent with that. You know, within um, within um, with what we do on 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 back of Valley is more often than not, we will not pay the funds directly to the to the beneficiary. We will pay them to the medical institution or to um, uh, to an educational institution, and that is again it gives trust to the donors. Uh, the donors then are sure are happy with where the funds are flowing, and secondly for the beneficiary, especially in someone like Nkosi's case, um, uh, it means that they know that they're not going to um, fall prey to people who now suddenly arrive asking for loans or actually just wanting to steal the money, which we have seen previously. So that's one that's got to be a lot, a lot more um, aware of those issues with, within the African context. Then secondly, um, people still trust, trust media a lot more within Africa than they do in, um, in, the, in, in, the, in, in the developed world. Um, so working with media partners becomes very important, and that's exactly what we do. And um, the, the media coverage around the course was, was very positive. It, def it definitely questioned, but it looked to correct the narrative rather than try and bring um, uh, the charity or organization down. So that is very important. And then, just as a final thing, um, what, what we've looked to do is say, as much as um, uh, one can say, look, We've raised the funds. That's it. You know, it's onto the onto the onto the next people to be accountable for how those funds are spent. We spend a lot of time ensuring that, um, not ensuring, looking to follow up and see how funds were used, and let the people that we that we um, uh, uh, that we work with know that we will be doing an update and, and we will be following up and letting the donors know what's actually happened with their funds. And again, yeah, this is this is where the, the trust element becomes more important. And I'll keep coming back to that. I think as, a, as an individual campaign, and of course it was a lovely campaign to, um, to, uh, to, to highlight because it is something firstly that's happened just right now and secondly because it really, it wasn't just a, an amazing campaign that was very positive, it ignited some very negative feedback and, how, and why that happened um, and how we look to, um, to, to correct the narrative around that. And I think whether you're a charity or whether you're an individual, one has to be very, very aware of the historical context of the country you're working in, and um, and uh, and and and, um, and the various powers that used to control um, uh, uh, various uh, geographic regions in Africa. I'd now like to talk also about um, a more uh, a a um, an example which is much more relevant in terms of of, um, uh, of for a charity, and that is I'd like to highlight a guy called Henley Karinga. Now Henley Karinga is he has his own charity 
here's a gentleman from Malawi and um, he set up something called the Kingfisher Lodge. Now the Kingfisher Lodge is a volunteer lodge on the lakes of Lake Malawi and he's been working for the last two and a half years to raise the funds to not only build the lodge but also as an extended um, area of impact in which he works with. He's also raised funds for people to go to school, he's actually raised funds for, for buildings to be built. He's a, he's a phenomenal man and he is he is the kind of of, uh, of of archetype, I'd almost say, um, uh, of what we should look to in terms of crowdfunding in Africa. Because he's, he's understood that crowdfunding sits within a portfolio of, um, of, of, uh, of potential funding channels that can be used within the African context. Now Henley, um, Henley's raised um, uh, over 265,000 Rand um, for his Kingfisher Lodge. Um, I know he's now, he's, a couple of schools, uh, school classrooms have been built, the lodge, the main, the main lodge areas have been built, the toilets have been built, the land has been cleared. Um, this is all through the funding that, that he's been able to raise, operating out of South Africa. So he has a gentleman, he lives in South Africa, he is Malawian, he has a lodge back in Malawi, he has been providing funds that flow from basically his South African fundraising efforts through to the Kingfisher Lodge in Malawi. So what has he done? Firstly, um, he engages across his whole network. Every person he meets, he speaks about what he's doing. Um, and that is something that you do anywhere in the world, whether you're, whether you're in Africa or, or, or anywhere else. But he, in, he engages on a very personal lodge. Secondly, he uses um, the, his Backer Buddy, um, uh, his Backer Buddy crowd, crowdfunding um, site as a trusted third party to work with. And that is very important because for people who don't have a, a, a context of, of uh, where you are in Africa, many of the people he meets and many of the people who've donated to him come from across the world. Um, having a trusted third party, whether it's something like Backer Buddy or you know, if you're in the UK, something like Just Giving or in the States, something like GoFundMe, um, all good platforms. Um, a, a third party platform allows people to say, okay, well, at least I think I can track it at where those funds are going. And, um, and there's some kind of vetting process that's gone into ensuring that this, this, um, this uh, charity is bona fide as such. There's a lot of mistrust, in, well not, not a lot of mistrust, there's, it's an, a trust relationship needs to be grown and a third party entity often allows that um, to be established on a, on a short term basis. So that's the one thing he does, he speaks to everyone. Second thing he does, yes, he uses a crowdfunding platform. Um, the third thing he does, though, is he recognizes that, again in Africa, online and offline are equally important. Now, a, a huge amount of support is raised through, um, through uh, online platforms themselves, but engaging with local media channels is critical. And, um, and we've seen that very strongly, Exa going back to um, in Corsi, actually, for example, um, one of the reasons in Corsi got such huge coverage is because the local media offline channels and online, so this is offline in terms of, you know, um, funny, I talk about um, uh, TV and radio as being offline because uh, they are more, uh, more a traditional media. But in those spaces, it was very powerful. Um, what we've seen is, from going back to now, uh, uh, Henry, um, he, he has uh, worked with his local communities um, he has managed to get coverage in, in, um, in, uh, in newspapers. He's been on radio. And this is a constant um, uh, engagement that he's looked to do, that he, he's activated across his total network. And this is a young gentleman who, um, Henley is only about 28, 29 years old. Uh, we have given him advice in terms of what he should be doing. And it's almost like a cheat sheet as such. Um, where he gets to, he asks us, what should I be doing now? We give him, him some advice in terms of, of, of how, she, how he should engage, and he gets out there and does it. But what he's been able to do through that is, because he's engaged across these various different media channels, um, he hasn't just tried to stick to one channel, for example, his social media channels. He's engaged on a, across his whole network and he speaks about what he does on a constant basis. He's very passionate about what he does. Together, that has made him very effective in his crowdfunding raising. And then probably, and this would be the most important part, is Henley is the greatest.
greatest champion for the work that he does. So when you speak to Henry, you know that he is absolutely passionate about what he does. And that is, that's probably his most powerful aspect. And what we could say there is, you know, we work, we work with the uh, with the uh, champion model, and the champion model gives you a initial reference point um, for an organisation, and um, and in that, we almost see it as a gold belt. Is that um, is that when other people will stand up and say they believe in your cause or your work. That is when people say, okay, well, if they say it's okay, well, then actually, yes, I'll get on board as well. And when people hear Henley talk about the Kingfisher Lodge back in Malawi, they have met Henley. They believe in him and they say, I trust you, therefore, I trust the organization which you're which you supporting. In, in, in this case, Henley's actually supporting his own organization back in, uh, back in Malawi. But I would say in terms of, of, of crowdfunding in Africa, Yes, you have to access your network. Yes, working with a, with a, with a third-party um, platform is a very good idea to build that initial trust. But most important out of all of these are identifying the champions who will be trusted both within the local context and an international or global context. Those are the people who, when, when others look to support the work that you're doing, they will be the people who they reference and say, well, if that person believes this, and they trust them, then yes, I will come on board as well. So yeah, um, to summarize, if you're looking at, uh, at, at Africa, firstly, look at it within the, if you're looking at, at uh, crowdfunding in Africa, firstly, understand your local context. So um, understand the history of the country. Um, and in our case, as example, working with course, you understand the potential pitfalls. You might think you're doing something in the right way, but it can be interpreted very differently. And when that happens, it is very public, exactly as, as, um, as we've just seen with, um, with Backer Bunny and Cause. Secondly, trust is a major issue. So whichever areas you think you can build trust, as I said, through, uh, through working with the third platform, um, uh, through ensuring that, that all the material that you have is, is professionally put together. And most importantly, as I said before, working with champions, champions who are trusted locally, and champions who are, who are likely to be trusted or, or um, are well known on an international basis. That is probably your most important thing out of, out of everything that you do. Make sure that you're working with good champions. And um, with that, I'd like to round off. Uh, if there's any questions you'd like to ask or for further engagements, um, our details are shared both at the end, the beginning, beginning and end of this, um, this presentation. And I am online at the moment, um, well, during, during this initial live session and uh, give us a shout we'd be happy to partner work with you and what we are also very aware of is that if we don't think we're the right platform to work with you on the, on the backer buddy side we will recommend or forward you to other trusted third parties that would be more appropriate thanks and have a great day